now know the common mode and differential behavior of the differential pair with the current mirror load. I will assume that the gate of this is connected to some current mirror arrangement such that the tail current is I naught. A small signal model for uh, differential signals is a transconductance of G M 1 and an output conductance of G D S 1 plus G D S 3. Each of these is calculated at a quiescent current of I naught by 2 okay. and as far as the common mode signal is concerned. Okay. The common mode gain what was this? We had it here, right? Approximately minus one by two GM three or not? Minus one by two GM three or not? Or basically minus GDS zero by two GM three, where GDS zero corresponds to the output conductance of M zero. Okay. So with this, we should be able to analyze anything. Okay. In general, the operating point of these two. Remember this will be used in feedback. So, this BICM is whatever the quiescent point is set after feedback is applied and so on. And over this any signal that we have V1 and V2 can be decomposed as a differentially applied signal and a signal applied as common mode. Uh, for differentially applied signals you use this model, for common mode signals you use that model that is all. Okay. So, that is more convenient than uh, trying to analyze them in terms of individual voltages V 1 and V 2. Okay. We have a large differential gain and a small common mode gain and that is exactly the behavior expected from an op amp. If uh, the op amp was ideal, the differential gain would be very large or infinite and the common mode gain would be 0, it would not respond to common mode at all. Okay. In reality, we neither have infinity nor 0, but we have large and small volumes. Now, uh, we can apply signals to this and then uh, we can use this itself as an op amp. Okay. It is not a great op amp because it behaves like first of all the gain is sort of limited to about 100 or so and uh, the output resistance is not very low. Okay. So, what happens is if you load this with a resistor the gain reduces further, but still in some uh, situations if you do not have a resistive load you can use this. Okay. As an example, let us try and make a voltage follower with an op amp which is a voltage control voltage source of gain 1 or a unity gain non inverting amplifier. Okay. So, if I have V i here this incremental output should also be the same as the incremental input that should be equal to V i. Okay. So, what should we do in the our op amp to make this connection? Yeah, all we have to do is connect it up like that okay. and here we apply the input signal V i. Okay. Now, what is the quiescent output voltage? So, let us say 
this is biased at some VICM. What is the coefficient output voltage? Really? Why? VICM. Why? Same current? M2. Why? Yeah, it's an op amp and negative feedback, but let us say we did not know about the op amp or anything. I just gave you the circuit and asked you what the output voltage was. How would you reason it out? What is that? Yeah, exactly. So, it is true, the same currents will have to flow. Again, so you can, uh, I mean, it is true, it, the op amp is providing negative feedback and the same negative feedback action we can see here, right. So, just imagine that this was slightly more than I naught by 2 and this current was slightly less than I naught by 2, the total current is fixed, right. So, what will happen? M3 and M4 are, is a current mirror. So, what will be this current? I naught by 2 plus delta because this goes through this current mirror, it gets mirrored. So, now you can see that the pull down current is smaller than the pull up current. What happens? Again, you can imagine a parasitic capacitance like we have done in all the negative feedback problems. So, initially whatever this voltage was, now it will keep rising until when these two currents become equal. So, that means that I naught by 2 and I naught by 2 are flowing here. That means that this voltage has to be equal to V i C m. Okay. Is this clear? And that is exactly what this is also saying. So, you just imagine that initially the output is uh, smaller than the input, then the op amp will drive the output until it becomes equal to the input. Okay. So, the feedback works for uh, the quiescent condition as well as for incremental signals. So, the quiescent output voltage will be V i C m. Okay. Now, in this uh, particular analysis, I have sort of ignored G d s and so on. If you throw everything together, you can do the small signal analysis, you will find that it may be slightly different from that. And so on. Then, I apply some signal V i. What will be the incremental output? What will be? Same and you can follow exactly the same reasoning, right. You just imagine that this voltage is different from V i, okay. Then the currents in M 1 and M 2 will be different from each other, okay. What will happen? The current in M 1 will get mirrored in M 3, get pushed through M 4. The difference current will keep on changing the output voltage until this current becomes equal to that current. Eventually, the currents in M 1 and M 2 have to be the same, okay. So, that is what happens in an op amp, right. This can be described in many ways, but the virtual short finally happens because because of negative feedback, these two currents will be forced to be the same. So, that means that this gate voltage and that gate voltage will be will have to be the same. Okay. So, that is how the virtual short occurs in an op amp. Is this fine? Now, in presence of GDS and so on, there will be some small errors that you can analyze, right. So, you should be able to figure out the same things either from large or small signal reasonings, but this is a unity gain uh, buffer using an op amp. And this can be used, this is sometimes used. The point is if you do have a resistive load and just for simplicity in order not to disturb the biasing, I will AC couple that. Okay. So, this is just so that I do not change the operating point here. What happens in this case? Yeah. So, first let us look at the small signal model of this alone without R L. What was it? The small signal model of the op amp. Okay. How do we make the unity gain buffer? I do this and the incremental input is applied there. Okay. What will be the output voltage? Now, in including everything in the model, what will be the output voltage? Yeah, not approximately, but exactly what is this? 
please calculate and tell me what is the value of uh, V O approximately true yeah it will be, but uh, what is it exactly. If the gain of the op amp here was a naught what would be the output a naught by 1 plus a naught or 1 by 1 plus 1 by a naught times V i and here also you get the same thing I mean you said g m by g m plus g d s 1 plus g d s 3 times V i which of course, is the same as 1 by 1 plus and I put the g m here and what is this? This is the reciprocal of the gain ok. A naught is g m by g d s 1 plus g d s 3 right. So, you get exactly that you get slightly smaller increment than what you apply as the input. So, those things can be got by small signal analysis ok. And if you do design the op amp to have a large gain as you most likely will then the output will be approximately yeah. ok. This is fine. Now, so this is uh, the small signal behavior what else do we need to discuss completely characterize the circuit. swing limits yeah. So, we can do it first I will do it for the op amp in general and then for the specific circuit we can go either way, but uh, when you use an op amp again you abstract out all the characteristics you do not want to every time you use the op amp you do not want to go down to the transistor level and say hey which is in saturation which is this and so on right. So, just like we use a small signal model for the entire op amp we would like to have some model of the swing limits ok. Let me call this the total output. This is V i C m ok. I mean in uh, previous cases when we had AC coupled circuits the input signal was essentially the inc incremental signal to the incremental input signal to the circuit and we expressed all our uh, swing limits in terms of those incremental signals ok. So, here instead I will uh, use the total, but it does not matter I mean for instance if you call this the output operating point value and then have an output increment I will show the limit on the whole thing then from that you can get the limit on this ok. So, just to keep the number of terms small I will do this ok. Now, what are all the signals we have if uh, I do write it as bias plus signal I have the incremental output signal and I have uh, sorry this is minus V d by 2 plus V c m and at the input I could have differential and common mode increments ok. So, potentially I could uh, uh, write the swing limits in terms of all of these. Now, it turns out that most often you will specify the limit on the output ok that is output uh, V naught right. As far as the differential input is concerned this is an op amp after all ok. If it is used properly in negative feedback what should be the value of V d? very small it should be close to 0 ok. So, we will just assume that V d is 0 and evaluate the swing limits. What it means is that like small changes in this gate voltage right it will not play a big role in uh, taking M 1 to triode region let us say or M 2 to triode region ok. So, we do not have to worry about the differential swing right, but we do have to worry about the common mode swing that will that can be quite a lot right because the common mode gain is quite small the common mode swing can be quite a lot right. So, the swing limits that are specified for an op amp are the swing limits on the input common mode value ok. Like I said I will do it in terms of uh, the total instead of the increment, but I will set the limits on V i C m. So, as you raise V i C m both of them up or down some transistors may go into uh, triode region or whatever uh, out of uh, saturation region and there can be a problem. And similarly, I will set the limits on the total output voltage yes. Yeah, because it is a V d itself is very small right. No, that is what you this is an op amp right. So, if you have an op amp and negative feedback what is the value of V d? Yeah, 
it will be close to 0 that is why. Why? No, that is correct. So, we assume that the op amp is designed for a high gain, right. Okay. So, the swing in G D will be 1 over gain times the swing at the output. Okay. So, let us say the gain is 50 or so. So, maybe if the output swings by a volt, this swings by 20 milli volts. That much error we can tolerate. Okay. If you really want to, you can calculate it exactly, but uh, it is much easier to just ignore it and as far as hand calculations are concerned. Okay. Does not make any qualitative difference to the circuit. And then later when we move on to make even higher gain op amps of thousands, we have a volt of uh, swing at the output, the input swings by 1 millivolt. I do not see the swing limit is an indication of crude indication of how big a signal you can apply, right. You are not looking to evaluate that to within 1 millivolt accuracy. It is not that any circuit will behave very nicely for 999 millivolts and then very badly for 1 volt, okay. Things will deteriorate continuously. So, you want to get an idea of. Uh, uh, Yeah, we will uh, evaluate the swing limit in the output. So, what I mean is right, this of course, this will vary and then send either M 2 or M 4 into triode region and so on. Okay. What I am saying is the small change in gate voltage because of the differential input of the op amp that I can ignore and still be accurate. Okay. So, if you are not convinced, you can do one particular case including V D and then see. Right, that's quite easy to do. It's not difficult. VCM, okay. there is. What is VCM? There is only one output. There is no common mode of two outputs, right? Okay, so the output will change. Okay, it could be that the effect of VCM on the output voltage is small. That is fine. It could be zero also. It doesn't matter. But uh, uh, in fact, in many cases, we just assume the common mode gain of the op amp to be zero. So, that is okay, but changing VCM will send some transistors into triode region. It may not influence the output voltage, but it will have some effect on the transistors. Okay. Is this clear? See, I mean in uh, other circuits also, we specified the swing limits in terms of the input voltage or the output voltage. First of all, here we have two input voltages to so to speak, the differential input voltage and the common mode input voltage. The differential input voltage is very small. Okay. So, we want not uh, uh, but and it makes more sense to uh, specify the output voltage of the op amp, okay. Because even in uh, even while designing op amp circuits, how do you do it? You design it based on negative feedback and you evaluate the output voltage, okay. And the input voltage of the op amp, if you assume ideal op amps, it is assumed to be 0. Otherwise, to a crude calculation, you can first calculate everything using an ideal op amp and then say that the input voltage is the output divided by the gain. This again will not be exact because the output voltage was calculated for the ideal case. So, but the input is very small and its effect in sending the transistors to uh, triode or some undesirable region will also be uh, small. Okay. Yeah, how the output we will calculate it. It is not that we will see we cannot say that V d is 0, right. If V d is 0 and the, the op amp has finite gain, then the output is not moving at all. That is not what we are assuming. We are saying that while calculating, let us say the this is the best example V G D of this right the drain to gate voltage of this the drain voltage swings by a lot the gate voltage swings hardly okay I mean the gate voltage can swing but the contribution of V D the differential input voltage to the gate voltage is very small so that we can ignore and still calculate. So, that you get from the circuit of the I mean analysis of the actual circuit right. I mean let us say the I mean you can assume that all of it is caused by V d it does not matter how does it matter. The actual output will be obtained from maybe let us say ideal op amp circuit analysis or something of the sort ok. So, uh, take this case for instance right the output is approximately V i. So, that I already know right I do not need to worry about what V d is. And in fact, in this model, there is no, I mean, there is no contribution of uh, VCM. The common mode uh, rejection of this is infinite, right. Is it okay? Because I have not assumed in this model, this control source responds only to VD. So, it does not respond to the average of these two voltages. So, it does not matter at all, okay. So, you can calculate the output voltage like you do in normal op amp circuit analysis, okay. 
So, let me I mean let me go through this it will become clearer. So, we have two inputs the differential and the common mode the differential voltage is so small that uh, and then uh, it makes more sense to specify the output in terms of specify the swing limit in terms of the output ok. I can always say that the output swing limit divided by the incremental gain is the input swing limit uh, of V d right, but it is not very useful to specify that that is all ok. So, now first let us uh, now again I am concentrating an op amp and open loop which we will never do. So, to be able to talk meaningfully about it we will assume that everything is perfectly matched in that case this voltage will be equal to that voltage right. So, we can analyze it. So, first let us analyze the effect of uh, the input common mode voltage right. So, let us say the input common mode voltage becomes very small which is the transistor that gets into trouble meaning we want the transistors to be on and we want them to be in saturation region ok. So, if it goes to either dry out region or cut off that means that uh, you are hitting some swing limit ok. So, as you lower V c m to smaller and smaller values which is the transistor that goes out of the desired region of operation which one m 1 what happens to m 1 V g s ok. What is this voltage what is the voltage at the tail node how much is it no no we are not talking about the incremental signals here this is the total signal in fact imagine an operating point situation the inputs are biased at VICM what will be that voltage what is it how would I calculate that if the if the gates are at VICM what will be the source voltage huh? yeah exactly. So, what is that V d d why V d d it is uh, what will this voltage be what will be the gate source voltage of m 1 in the operating point both sides are biased at VICM what is the gate source voltage of m 1 it is whatever is required to carry a current of I naught by 2. So, this is V t n plus square root I naught by k n right. So, the voltage at the tail is V a c m minus V t n minus square root I naught by k n ok. So, the V g s of m 1 or m 2 does not change at all as you change V a c m is not it the V g s of m 1 and m 2 is independent of V a c m it will be whatever uh, it will be the voltage required to carry a half the tail current is that correct. So, which is the transistor that gets into trouble as you lower the value of V a c m which one the lower most one ok. So, first of all I did not show the current mirror let me draw that I naught and this m 0 0 and m 0 are identical ok. What is the minimum voltage required for m 0 to stay in saturation region? it is VGS minus minus V t of that transistor which is the overdrive of that transistor which is basically square root of 2 times the current divided by by the way since uh, all these transistors can be different let me uh, let me make it k n 0 meaning the width of this could be potentially different from width of m 1 and m 2 and so on k n 0 means uh, mu n c ox w by l of m 0 ok and this would be k n 1 
okay we need certain minimum voltage across m0 and what happens as i change vicm this voltage will move up or down isn't it it will this voltage will simply follow the gate voltage isn't it because these two will carry a current of y0 by 2 so the gate source voltage is fixed assuming that the tail current is i0 then this voltage simply raises or lowers along with vicm and yesterday for incremental common mode picture also we saw that from the common mode input to this it was a source follower right so it simply follows the input the tail node simply follows the input so at some point as you lower vicm this voltage will also become smaller and smaller and it will start squeezing the bottom transistor okay this is okay so what is the value of vicm minimum value of vicm that's it what is it i mean we have all the voltages right just evaluate the limit and tell me so this number here has to be greater than 2i0 by kn0 that's all okay so the lower limit of uh, vicm is essentially if i denote the uh, this quantity the overdrive as vd sat it is vd sat 0 at a current of i0 plus vgs1 at a current of i0 by 2 okay basically we need to maintain enough voltage across this for it to remain in saturation and the voltage required across gate source of m1 and m2 for them to carry a current of i0 by 2 okay and if i expand it out i will get this quantity will be vtn plus square root i0 by kn1 plus square root 2 i0 by kn0 okay this is fine so the important thing in evaluating swing limits is first to figure out which transistor gets into trouble right as you raise or lower the uh, raise or lower a voltage and that you have to do it by reasoning i mean you can try and analyze and calculate every single voltage in the circuit but you have to be able to have some more feel for the circuit than that it becomes easier if you have expressions for every voltage in the circuit of course you can do it but it just is too messy right? is it okay so what happens when uh, vicm becomes large then also some transistor might get into trouble right we have now figured out the lower limit on vicm what about the upper limit what happens as i go on increasing m1 what happens uh, sorry i go on increasing vicm which transistor gets out of uh, m3 can m3 ever get out of uh, saturation region why not gate and drain are tied together so m3 is one thing that's safe that will never get out of uh, saturation region so which is the transistor that will get in trouble m1 and m2 okay so again these two voltages are fixed right what are the values of these two voltages in this scenario when i have both of these inputs gates of m1 and m2 biased at a, at the same voltage what is the what are the drain voltages of uh, m1 and m2 no vdd minus whatever vsd is required in m3 and m4 to carry a current of i0 by 2 they'll be fixed so you have the drains of m1 and m2 fixed you are raising the gates so clearly it can go into try out region right the gate can rise above the drain but not by more than one threshold voltage okay so this vicm has to be smaller than the drain voltage the drain voltage here is vdd minus vsd3 at a current of i0 by 2 okay plus the threshold voltage of m1 so here when we have multiple transistors of n and p types you have to distinguish between the two thresholds as well okay this is fine so vicm has to be smaller than 
VDD minus VSG3 at a current of I naught by 2 plus VTN and if I expand this out I will get VDD minus VSG3 has VTP and square root I naught by KP of M3 okay, plus VTN. And if uh, VTN or VTP are the same these two will get cancelled out, cancelled out. So, you will have VDD minus square root of I naught by KP 3 that is it can go to VDD, but within one overdrive voltage. Okay. So, that voltage VGS, VSD minus VT that is called the overdrive voltage right. So, as you go on increasing VSEM this can happen is it okay. So, M 1 and M 2 will go into uh, triode region and that is a problem. By the way we are doing this for this op amp this uh, uh, simple op amp which is a differential pair with a current mirror load this is known as a single stage op amp. Okay. I have repeatedly said that this is basically like a single common source amplifier. So, this is what is known as a single stage op amp. Later when we want to get more substantial gains we will go to higher number of stages. Now, we evaluate the swing limits for a single stage op amp, but like I said the input structure of most op amps looks like this. So, the input swing limit of uh, every op amp that uses this uh, input differential pair will also be the same. Okay. Is this fine? So, later we will go to a two stage op amp, but the input part of it will be exactly the same. So, these the same results will also apply in that case. Okay. Now, <coughs> it has become too messy. Let's me. This is V naught and V naught changes. Okay. So, let us say V I C M is fixed and V naught changes. How will it change? Obviously, it is because some differential voltage has been applied in some way, but like I said the differential voltage applied itself is so small that we ignore that, but it is not that the output will change without the input ever changing. Okay. So, the input will change, but by a small amount. Okay. So, now, uh, so let us say V naught becomes very small okay, because a negative if you apply a negative V d V naught will fall, if you apply a positive V d V naught will rise. So, let us say you applied a small negative V d and V naught keeps falling. Okay. At what point will any transistor get out of the desired M 2. Okay. So, again this gate voltage is rising because V d is positive. Okay, there is always a possibility that M 1 goes into triode region, but that is what I was saying earlier this V d is so small that we do not consider those possibilities, we do not have to worry about those things. Okay. The big change in voltage is only in the output voltage. So, what happens as the output becomes smaller and smaller, the gate voltage of this is nearly fixed again V d is very small. right? So, the gate is fixed at V i C m of M 2 and the drain keeps falling how far can it fall? How far below the gate can it fall? Huh? It should be greater than V A C M. What should it be? Minus C M V A C M minus V T. So, the drain can go below the gate, but not by too much, not by more than one threshold voltage. Okay. The condition for saturation is V d s greater than V g s minus V t or many times easier one to use is V d greater than V g minus V t. I get this simply by expanding V d s as V d minus V s and V g s as V g minus V s that is all. So, in this case ignoring any small variations in V d, V o has to be greater than how much? V i c m minus V t n. Okay. So, the output swing limit also depends on the choice of the input common mode voltage in this particular case in this op amp. Okay. So, this is important and sometimes the two can be linked, sometimes one of them will limit the output voltage, sometimes it is some combination of the two. Okay. And let us say because of uh, applying a positive V d V naught keeps rising then what happens which transistor gets into trouble? M 4. 
right very clearly because this is fixed this is rising. So, this voltage across m 4 is getting smaller and smaller and m 4 is getting squeezed ok. So, what is the upper limit on v naught? What is the upper limit? What is the minimum voltage you need across m 4? V s d minus V t. How much is that? V s d 3 minus V t p ok. How much is that? Square root of I naught by A p 3. I will use the symbol 3 for both m 3 and m 4 and 1 for both m 1 and m 2 ok. So, this is less than V d d minus square root I naught by K p 3 ok. This is fine. In fact, you would like the swing limits to be as large as possible, right? Because you have a certain supply voltage and you would like to use all of the supply voltage for the signal as much of it as possible, ok. But always there will be some limit, I mean, you cannot go all the way to the upper supply, that is, in any usually in any circuit, especially circuits that do not use inductors, the output voltages in electronic circuits will be confined to the supply rails between 0 and VDD, ok. So, one of the things is to try to make them go as close to VDD and 0 as possible, but you will never be able to go all the way to VDD or all the way down to 0. This is because always you will have some component, some transistor between the output and VDD, right and you have to have enough voltage across that device. The best thing you can do is have just one transistor between the output and the rail, ok. So, in fact, here between the output and the upper rail there is just one transistor, you have to leave room for just one transistor. So, it is optimum on the upper side, but on the lower side you have two of them. So, uh, this does not go very close to ground at all, but it goes quite close to VDD. You had some question? Yeah, so you tell me will any transistor cut off? Actually, the way I have uh, set up the circuit now, there is no load, right. So, what is the current in all the devices? I know by 2. So, the current is not changing at all. The incremental currents in all the devices are very small, ok. So, if I had connected an external load, that is a good question. I mean, before I went on about saturation and cut off, but now I did not worry about it. The reason is because I do not have an external load, the incremental currents are very, very small, ok. They are not 0 because the gain is finite, there will be some small incremental currents flowing in the GDSs, ok. So, but that is all that we have. So, the incremental currents are so small that uh, none of the transistors will cut off in this particular uh, situation, ok. that is correct. So, that is the reason why in that case we do not I mean that is correct very much. I mean if you have multi stage op amp it is the input common mode swing of this that is relevant. The output swing is not relevant because it is not going to swing much. It is the output of that stage that will limit that is correct. So, it becomes even less critical. Any other questions? So, now if you make a circuit using this op amp First of all, in any circuit, even without knowing all of this, you can go and evaluate the swing limits from scratch, right. You can evaluate the incremental voltages, uh, total VGS, VDS and ID of every device and find out when any device goes into saturation or cutoff. But again, as we make more and more complicated circuits, we have to make macro models for a collection of transistors. Otherwise, I mean it becomes too painful, right. You do not go into the uh, transistor level for let us say a 1000 transistor circuit. You will build it up hierarchically. So, for an op amp, we have some swing limits. Okay. So, now we have the swing limits on the input common mode voltage and the total output voltage ok. And this we can use to calculate the swing limit of any other circuit we make with it ok. Let us take the example that we took earlier. This is a unity gain buffer made using this op amp ok. 
I will call the input bias V i 0 in order to not confuse notation. In the operating point what will be the output? It will be V i 0 right ok. So, now what is the input common mode voltage of the op amp? The input common mode voltage by definition is the average value of the input voltages what is it? It is V i 0 ok. Now, we know that we have a supply voltage from 0 to V d d and V i C m is limited to some values ok. So, there is some limited range over which V i C m can vary that we have calculated right. V i C m has to be in this region where the upper limit is V d d minus V t p square root i naught by k p 3 plus V t n ok and this lower limit is V t n plus square root i naught by k n 1 plus square root 2 i naught by k n 0 ok. So, first of all when you design an op amp circuit, you design a circuit like this you have to choose V i 0 somewhere here is not it obviously otherwise it would not even work is this correct. So, we assume that output will follow the input all this is true when all the transistors have high gain and everything is in saturation and so on. So, first is you to choose the value of V i 0 you have to look at the input common mode limit ok. And the output also has some limits. So, it depends on the chosen input common mode voltage. So, V o will vary between these where uh, this is V d d minus square root i naught by k p 3 ok. Now, in this particular case, so you have to look at this for uh, I mean yeah, for uh, the again now we apply a signal. So, V i 0 plus V i what will be the output? Approximately the same ok. Let us ignore that uh, uh, g m by g m plus g d s that number. So, this is approximately V i ok. So, what are the conditions you have to satisfy? Yeah. So, now what is the input common mode voltage when the input is applied? when the signal is applied. What is the common mode input of the op amp when the signal is applied? No, the total common mode voltage what is it? It is just the average of these two right it is V i 0 plus V i ok. So, if you have a non inverting amplifier this is always the case and then what is the output voltage? That is also V i 0 plus V i the total output voltage. So, you have to make sure that both of these have to be in the respective limits ok. Then you choose V i 0. So, one of the goals usually is to maximize the uh, amplitude of the lower case V i the input signal that you apply. So, you have to choose V i 0 such that you can apply the maximum value ok. So, that is the philosophy I did not take the numbers, but once you I mean if you have the numbers for all these transistors you can calculate and find that out ok. So, the one difference between one other difference. So, you have a non inverting amplifier, you can take it for any gain. I chose the buffer earlier, and you have an inverting amplifier. There are a number of differences. One, of course, trivial one is the sign of the gain one is positive the other is negative, but that let us say I completely ignore. But one of the significant differences is that if I apply V i here what is the output there? Again assume roughly an ideal op amp what is it? K times V i. If I apply V i here what is the output there? Minus K V i. What is the voltage here? V i right V i and what is the voltage there? 0. So, what is the common mode input in this case average of these two 
So, common mode input is V i and what is the common mode input here? 0. Okay. So, when you make an inverting amplifier the common mode is not exercised at all. So, there is no common mode swing. So, the effect of the common mode swing limit is not there right. Once you choose the operating point correctly then the common mode does not change at all. Okay. The common mode is independent of the signal. So, that can be a big advantage of the inverting amplifier structures. Is that okay? Huh? So, in this case the the common mode voltage of the op amp depends on the input signal right whereas, here it is 0 independent of the input signal. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, that I will come to later. So, these op amps will operate with or maybe I will say that this is some V bias. Okay. So, let me call this V bias instead of ground this is connected to V bias. What will be this voltage? Also V bias, but it does not depend on the input signal that is the model. Okay. So, here I mean and this is a non inverting buffer and the swings will uh, be limited by both the input common mode swing and the output swing is it okay. What is that? It does not matter here right this uh, this circuit there is no AC coupling. So, we do not there is no uh, this is a DC coupled circuit. So, independently of frequency it will work the same way. If you do use AC coupling somewhere you have to assume those frequencies where the coupling capacitors are short circuits. Okay. Any other questions? So, like before we evaluate the small signal model for the whole op amp and evaluate the swing limits and so on you have to resort to some approximations. You can always do the exact stuff, but it is so elaborate and does not add anything essential to the picture. Okay. So, now we have to go further than the single stage op amp. The single stage op amp gives a very small gain. We have to increase the not very small gain, it gives a gain that is not worthy of it being an op amp. So, <laughs> we have to improve that picture. So, we have to add more stages. Okay. So, I have to add another stage. What kind of stage will I add? What stage would I add to get common source amplifier, right. So, first of all we have already done the business of taking the difference between the inputs the output is single ended that is this output is available with respect to ground. So, now I will use my usual common source amplifier I mean amplifiers like that which accept a input signal with respect to ground and give you an output signal also with respect to ground. Okay. And why common source amplifier? it has a large input resistance and also it has a large enough gain. I mean it is kind of the best gain that you can get from a single transistor. Okay. So, we will follow this with a common source amplifier. So, that will essentially give us a cascade of roughly two common source amplifiers. The gain of this is like that of a common source amplifier and we will have one more. Okay. So, from that we probably get a gain of several hundreds to thousands. Now, uh, we have already used both NMOS and PMOS here. And the for the following common source amplifier, we again have a choice. Should we use NMOS or PMOS? Again, there is no AC coupling here, right? If it's AC coupling, it doesn't matter. You just set the bias of that independently and move on. We don't want to do that because the entire op amp will be biased only with feedback around the op amp. Okay? So we can't do AC coupling. So what kind of? So that means that when you do, you you can avoid AC coupling anytime. But the output bias of one stage, output operating point of one stage, has to be compatible with the input operating point of another stage. Okay? So given that, should I follow this with an NMOS or a PMOS common source amplifier? NMOS. Why? Swing on top of which one is very small. Yeah, but uh, will it be at that value? How do you choose? Yeah, so is it so obviously this is related to the swing limit of V naught. Okay, so now is it more compatible with having an NMOS stage or a PMOS stage? PMOS, why? 
Yeah. So there are a couple of reasons. It's roughly right. It can go up to VDD minus square root I naught by KP three. And what is the lower limit? Huh? Ah, it is dependent on the input common mode voltage VICM minus VTN. Okay. So these are forbidden regions. You can choose VO to be anywhere over there. Okay. So now let me take an NMOS common source amplifier. And let's say I want it to be biased at a current I2. I haven't completed the feedback. This is not the complete biasing picture, but somehow it'll get biased. Okay. What is the voltage required here? Huh? It's VTN plus square root 2I2 by if I call this M uh, what is the next one? M5. Okay. KM5. And I could also think of a PMOS amplifier I2. Again, feedback is not shown. What is this voltage that is required? VDD minus VDP minus 2I2 by KP5. Okay. So, which is more compatible? Which one do you think you can easily accommodate within this? First one. Why? Above which one? VICM minus VTN. But you do not know the choice of VICM, right? If VICM is chosen to be VDD by 2, okay, so in the middle of the supply, clearly this forbidden region could be quite a lot, okay. Whereas this definitely will be below this, is not it? Because after all, you have VDD minus VTP minus overdrive, whereas here you have only VDD minus overdrive. Which one? That is correct, but it can get to this, is not it? It may not be able to get to this at all. Okay. So, let me take some case as usual, you just evaluate it. Let us take VDD equal to 10 volts and the usual transistor mu on C ox W by L, which is mu P C ox W P by L P is 100 microampere per volt square for everything and evaluate it and see. And the threshold voltages are 1 volt okay. and see which is more compatible. Okay. So, we will continue from there. 